done a lot of research on this, and uh, after going to a, a meeting of my beekeeping club, the only thing I can say for sure about winterizing bees is that there's a lot of different opinions on it. So, this is what I did. In the fall, at the end of the nectar flow, you should remove any supers that aren't at least half full of honey. These two supers have no capped honey, just some nectar and open cells. I'll lay them on top for the bees to clean up. They'll get to enjoy the fruits of their labor. When they're empty of nectar and dry, I'll store them for the winter. I planned on waiting a couple of weeks uh, after I pulled those mostly empty supers to let the bees keep working the remaining supers, but after a few days I noticed the bees were moving the honey down uh, from the supers into the uh, lower deeps. So I uh, grabbed uh, uh, those two supers and harvested them before the uh, girls could uh, clean me out. Funny how that behavior spans multiple cultures. Uh, it's been a pretty good harvest. I, I've got a uh, about a three-quarter full bucket of honey here. It uh, weighs 40 pounds. So combined with the uh, early season take of 47 pounds, it gives me 87 pounds of honey for my second season. I think this is primarily from goldenrod. There's a lot of that around and I think it's the primary plant in bloom at this time of year. A bottle a uh, little bit of this uh, goldenrod honey so I can grade the color. Uh, certainly not as thick as my uh, early su summer honey. My first three honey harvests. On the left is an amber from late last summer. In the middle is an extra white from the beginning of this summer and on the right an extra light amber from late summer fall this year this is a winter syrup recipe uh, it's a special syrup for feeding the bees going into the winter months uh, the thicker consistency uh, recipe makes it easier for the bees to convert the syrup into capped honey that they'll need to store for the winter. This is um, 10 quarts of water. It's boiled. You, uh, you don't want to pour the uh, sugar into boiling water itself because it might caramelize and that can make the bees sick. So I'll just, uh, now I'm going to stir this uh, sugar up and let it dissolve and when it gets to uh, room temperature I'll go ahead and add the uh, honey bee healthy and the uh, fumagillin B uh, nosema medication so this should be right around four gallons of heavy uh, of heavy syrup, two gallons for each of the hives. I'm going to take some preventative measures and medicate the bees for the winter. Nosema is probably the most serious disease that affects an overwintering brood, the most common symptom of which is dysentery. Basically you'll see bee poop on the outside of the hives. <laughs> Quiet, you. It affects their ability to digest pollen, thereby shortening the worker bees' uh, lives. Uh, the most, or at least the recommended treatment uh, for, for it is to dissolve fum fumagillin B into their syrup and feed it to them. You dissolve fumagillin B in the cool water first, then add it to the cool down syrup. It won't dissolve properly if you add it directly to the syrup. For this bottle, the dosage is a half a teaspoon per gallon of syrup and since we have four gallons here I'm going to add two tablespoons or two teaspoons sorry okay so 
We'll add it to the simple syrup. Stir it up. I'm also going to add this feeding supplement called Honey Be Healthy. Uh, it's a feeding stimulant and it's made up of uh, lemongrass and spearmint oil. And uh, basically it just provides some of the essential minerals uh, to promote a vigorous and healthy hive. And for this, uh, for this bottle the dosage is one tablespoon per gallon. So I'll be adding four tablespoons of, of Honey Be Healthy to the mix. And this I can add directly. Let's say shake well. Four tablespoons. And I'm going to take this out to the bee yard and give it to the girls. Medicated syrups only used on the first two gallons. I've, uh, again, that's four gallons, so only this first uh, this first feeding. Uh, but uh, again, I will continue using the Honey Bee Healthy after they finish off this uh, this first dose. This is heavy. So I'm going to divide this evenly between them. I can really smell that honey bee healthy. It smells really, really good. That lemongrass and spearmint. Hopefully they'll heat up all that syrup and uh, build up their stores to a good enough level so that they'll survive the winter. And don't forget to install a mouse guard. I put on the entrance reducers on the hive several weeks ago. It reduces, it, it restricts the entrance to a small two and a half two and a half inch by quarter inch slot and that'll serve to keep the cold winds out and also help with keeping the mice out. Well unfortunately there was a frost uh, last week and uh, it killed this hive. Um, the second hive is still doing great. You can see it's a nice warm day today. This is the end of October and they're out um, you know, on their cleansing flights, and uh, but this one's completely dead. So and it's unfortunate because this, yeah, there's there's a full box of honey here. This is uh, easily 50 or 60 pounds. Got a bunch of frames of big frames of honey here. I'm not sure what to do with, but I may uh, inspect the other hive, and if there's a little light, maybe I'll transplant them. There they are. All the girls. At least it's not a mystery where the bees went, as if, as in like a colony collapse disorder situation. So they're just all here. Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this yet, but uh, if this this uh, colony survives the winter, I may attempt to split. Uh, and rear a new queen and use that to populate this hive or I'll just buy a package of bees and do it manually. I'll let you know in the spring. During the winter the bees will form a cluster to hold their warmth. Uh, by vibrating their bodies they'll maintain the interior of that cluster at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Without proper ventilation, the heat off of that cluster will rise up, hit the inner cover, condensate, and fall back down 
as icy cold water on the bees. That can either kill them or certainly stress the colony. In fact, for every 10 pounds of honey that the bees consume, uh, they'll produce one gallon of water. So there's several methods to provide ventilation. Uh, the one I'm going to use is to drill a three-quarter inch auger hole just below the handheld on the brood chamber. That'll serve two purposes. One, it will allow that moisture-laden air to escape. And two, it will provide a second entrance for the bees in case the bottom entrance becomes blocked by dead bees or snow. Oh, this pains me to deface my beautiful boxes. But last thing to do is to wrap the uh, hive in roofing tar paper. You can buy this at uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, any hardware store. Uh, the, the black paper will absorb the sun and help keep the uh, hive warm. Uh, it will also act as a windbreak. So I went ahead and measured things and cut, cut out uh, a cap that's going to go over the hive. And I also cut out and built from the paper a sleeve. It's going to be a little easier, so I'm just going to slide it over and put the cap on. And that should do it for the winter. Uh, slide this sleeve on now. It's on there nice and tight. There's also a, a double thickness of tar paper for the uh, cap. Okay, well, should do it. It's the tail end of November and the bees have stopped taking the sugar water. Since it's a, a nice day today, nice and warm, take this opportunity to, to remove the hive top feeder and put on the inner cover. I'm going to add the inner cover with the lip side down. That'll give the bees a little more room as they go over the tops of the frames when they're moving uh, their honey stores around. With the lip side down, the inner and outer covers will practically be touching each other, and the air will have nowhere to go except fall back down uh, in the form of condensation on the bees. So I'll be adding this half-inch shim up front to lift up the inner cover and allow the air to circulate. Um, there's a lot of different opinions on uh, winterization techniques, but the one common thread amongst all the, amongst all the debates uh, is that you have to provide adequate ventilation. Uh, finally, I'm going to be adding some sugar cakes uh, as a emergency feeding supplement uh, for the bees over the winter. This uh, sugar cake is simply uh, granular sugar mixed with a little water and some honey bee healthy and allowed to dry. And I'm just going to place some on top and the bees can come out through the, uh, through the hole here in the inner cover and, and eat this if they need it. See you in the spring.